Hello, my name is Elizabeth Whiter. I'm an animal complementary therapist. I have an animal clinic and a human clinic here in Sussex in the United Kingdom. I'm the principal of the Healing Animals Organisation, whereby we train people from all over the world in animal welfare skills. We now have over 400 graduates who work with cats, dogs, horses, wildlife and birds and actually Dr Rahili here is not only a fantastic vet but she's also one of my graduates from the Diploma in Animal Healing. So as Elizabeth just said, I'm Dr Rohini Satish. I'm an integrative, holistic veterinarian, animal healer, um, after doing the healing diploma. I, I'm a surgeon, I'm trained in orthopedics, and I'm also trained in holistic treatments such as um, animal healing, acupuncture, acupressure, and the use of um, both Chinese, Ayurvedic, uh, and of course western herbs as well. Yes and um, complementing all of that is the wonderful use of culinary herbs whereby we are working with animals self-selecting some of the herbs that grow in your gardens and things like mint, calendula, rosehip and rosemary, lavender. Um, I'm a zoo pharmacognosist whereby animals self-select plant material to self-medicate themselves. Yes, this is a very interesting concept and uh, something that a lot of um, veterinarians and animal guardians are going to see in the future because it gives the power back to you and to your pets. And today we are delighted that we're joined by Lily. Lily here is 10 years of age yep. and she's a Norfolk Terrier cross, uh, I'd say Jack Russell. Yes, and, uh, definitely looks it, yeah. She's, uh, she came from the Celia Hammond Cat Trust, a rescue centre that I work at, uh, some nine and a half years ago. And uh, today, um, Rahini is going to be demonstrating some acupressure uh, points on the body um, so that you at home can enjoy doing this with your animals. Yes. Now the key thing here to note is that it's the body or nature that heals rather than me the vet. And that is the focus of empowering you as pet guardians and one of the key things at your fingertips is acupressure. Now acupuncture which involves using these needles is only permitted for a veterinarian to practice for the simple reason that you might not know when you might hit a vein or an artery and it Absolutely. could actually cause more harm Absolutely. than good. Whereas acupressure is perfectly okay for you as a pet guardian um, to practice on your own animals and even on others. So if you watch me, there's a little needle and that is what acupuncture stands for and all you do is she didn't even feel that. It's as simple as that. Um, but this is not necessary. Acupressure is equally as powerful. Mm. And it is a very ancient system of medicine, which was originally developed in India, but then the Buddhist monks took it over to China, mm. and now it's very, very famous mm. in China. And um, it involves certain meridians or energy pathways where the chi moves. And um, one of the key things I'm going to talk to you about today is about how you prepare for an acupressure session. And this is where my training in animal healing with Elizabeth came in very handy. Simply because the principles of preparing are exactly the same as for an acupressure session. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to pass you over to Elizabeth to start off explaining how you go through preparing for either a healing or an acupressure session. Thank you, Rahini, so much. Okay, well, it's wonderful to be able to give healing to your pets. Everybody has the ability to give healing. And we're joined to get today with Lily. And what I'm going to just share with you is how you can prepare to give acupressure to your animals. First of all, we're going to ground ourselves. So it's very important as the pet guardian that we're going to be in the right frame of mind before we even 
give acupressure to our pets. So first and foremost, this is mindful meditation. And I think it would be a good idea for us to actually put this into practice. So breathing in through the nose. And letting go. Breathing in. And letting go. Keeping the breath deep and sending the breath all the way down through your body, down through your legs, down through your feet and imagining that you've got beautiful roots growing from the soles of your feet. Long, short, fat, thin roots. This gives us grounding so we can really feel connected to the earth. Breathing this earth energy right up through the body, everybody. Feeling solid and strong in the body. All we have is the present moment. Animals are not in the past, they're not in the future. They are right in the present moment. So what we're doing is now connecting to the animal that we're working with. And as we can see, Lily is beautifully now relaxed because she's adapting to our energy. She's adapting to the environment. So we're now just going to very gently, from our heart to Lily, have a heart to heart connection because healing is all about intention. Being able to really feel and understand and love is the key to all healing. So as we have this lovely heart-to-heart -heart connection, I'm just going to gently show you how to just stroke the body very slowly, so all the way down through the body, breathing nice and deeply, and just using your hand very slowly, stroking the length of your pet's body, and just pulsating that love. Now with my left hand, I'm just very, very gently connecting to the base energy. And the base, which is the whole of the skeletal system, the bones, because when Lily is in this very, very relaxed state, she's going to be able to focus She's going to be able to really feel connected to the energy. And the energy is all around us, in us, above us, below us. And we're connecting to that universal healing energy, which is also called Qi, which Dr. Rahin is going to talk about. And as we just now keep the focus and our intention always on Lily, on pulsating that love. We're creating the right environment for healing to take place and also the acupressure. And I'm just going to now, just with two hands, just focus the chi energy over the whole of the body. And in our book, You Can Heal Your Pet, is a full step-by-step -step guide to how to give healing and also Rahini takes you through the acupressure points for a beautiful healing session. So now, as we can see, Lily is really relaxed. In fact, she's going into a beautiful theta state. And this will allow now a wonderful acupressure session to take place because when our animals are really relaxed they're able to thoroughly process and enjoy the next part which I'm now going to hand over to Dr. Rahili. Thank you Elizabeth. So now we've got Lily in the perfect state to give a good acupressure session. Now I'm going to demonstrate how to do an opening acupressure massage which you can happily do in your own homes with your own pets. The key is to use the heel of your hand. And I'm going to use the left hand because she's facing this way. 
we use the blood and meridian. This is the main pathway that goes all the way on either side of the spine down to the feet. We are not going to disturb Lily, so don't panic if you can't reach the right points. But just watch what I do. We start at the top of the head, go gently down. You can start with one side at a time. And as I'm doing, I'm evaluating for signs of heat, for cold, but you can just focus on giving a lovely massage. Then you become flat-handed as you go down the thigh on the lateral aspect, go all the way down to the foot, and then that's down to the toe, the last toe. I'm going to do it on this side. Yes, I was just going to say it would be okay. lovely to repeat that so, so I can see as yes. well. Now we need her leg up, but I'm not going to disturb her. So we start that way, go like that, on either side of the spine, come down, go flat-handed, go down, and feel you're basically bringing, stop going down this way and then stopping the tip of the lateral digit because that's where the bladder meridian actually finishes. And when you're doing this, uh, Dr. Rahini, um, are we putting a little bit of pressure? Could you could you just put it on like just it's very light pressure. A very you do light not pressure. press. You just put very light pressure like I showed you. Yeah. And you work all the way and you have the important thing is you need to do it three times on each side. Okay. So some of some dogs might not like this so you can actually if they're smaller even do this. The important thing is to be comfortable you do three times and on the third time you can go around and connect both your hands below the ribs mm -hmm. so feel the last rib and go around it and so your hands meet that is an opening massage very simple but it's got to be slow mm. then you're ready to what is called do acupoint work now how do you know which point to use there's details in the book and also as you learn more you will learn what points to use for what conditions absolutely so with regards to lily i'm going to teach you two basic points which you could use and one point is called the bahui point which is a little spongy point here i'm actually just going to just yes, move, around just move like that Good and you can just feel that where the sacrum and the last lumbar vertebrae meet you just put gentle pressure you can pulsate or you can just do that, or you can just even just hold it. Very interestingly there, Rahini, she just yawned, um, just processing. So when your animals, some of the things you might observe uh, when you're doing some healing or some acupressure work is keeping your eyes open first of all, at all times, and just observing how your animals are reacting. And she gave out a beautiful yes, yawn there. She is processing. The response. Correct. So you can look for yawning, you can look for stretching, they lick their lips. And chewing. Yes. So they're processing the beautiful healing that's taking place. But don't do it, you don't need to do it for more than a minute or a maximum of two minutes. Mm. And do gentle pressure and let this particular point is very important for anything to do with the hindquarters. Right. Okay. Which is really useful um, for Lilia. She's 10 years of age now. We know she has a luxating patella. Yes. And uh, so she great. has a kneecap. I think it's on the right side, which is moving in and out of the patella groove. And it would really benefit her to have that. But there are other points as well, which yeah. we won't go into detail because this is a small, um, just to give you a taster. There's another important point that is on top of the head, the GB20. Yeah. And you can put gentle pressure just on there. She likes it. Lily, come on, darling. We'll just move her around a tad. Like that. You always, always give a little massage. And see, the, the healing has made such a difference. Gentle pressure here on, right on top of the head. It's called the point of 100 convergences. It's a very powerful point. You can just do it. Either use your forefinger or your thumb. Gently put pressure lightly and you can pulsate or you can just hold it there Gee. and I, I feel when I'm doing some of the point work Rahini that you know the connection and the intention and breathing down my right arm if you're right handed and you're yeah. I, I take it you can use either yes, left or yes, right hand can. Rahini your intention is important and you can send healing through the acupressure points lovely so down through the right arm yeah. uh, down into your fingers yes. really sending the breath all yeah. the way down into your um, finger or your thumb, whatever you like 
would yeah. like to use. Um, just a hot tip here, um, I work with animals every day as, as does Rohini and um, you know my nails are quite short so that I can yes. use my fingers and thumbs yes. so just be a bit careful if you've got perhaps uh, long nails maybe yeah. you have a couple of nails shortened so mm. that you can yes. you can just feel the pad of your finger or your thumb which is really important yes. here and do not use nails now the thing another thing. beautiful look at this yawn Rohini yes. this is fabulous that she's really letting go she's yes. really relaxing she's enjoying it and what's, what's, important thing? what's important here is the mandibular joint um, is that all of us carry a lot of stress here in the jaw and what is really fabulous is when your animals yawn and when you yawn as well um, it's incredibly important to release and let go and there's a point here just behind the ears that you can focus on as well if necessary Anyway, so once you've decided on two, three points, yeah. you can incorporate that and then you have to do the closing massage. Right. The another important thing I uh, did not mention at the beginning was about getting permission. Just like you need permission from a pet before you give them healing, yes. you need permission before giving acupressure. And if you want to just go through quickly through the permission thing and how do you know if an animal is given permission? Yes, um, basically when we are giving healing to our pets, it's always lovely to invite your pet into the healing. And what we do is, um, when we're going to commence an acupressure or healing um, session, first of all make sure your mobile phone's switched off. Make sure that you've got some time for this. Um, you can Very find a nice, yes, a nice room that you can settle down with, put some soft music on and then invite your animals into that space. Now you might be even on a couch or on the floor, on the carpet or a rug, um, and um, invite your animals into the healing. So in my mind's eye, I would sort of say, Lily, would you like some healing today or would you like me to do some relaxation techniques with you? So you're inviting your animal in. Now, we know that Lily has been very uh, amenable today she's really enjoying this healing session with us and so that's great and so sometimes animals may just be not so keen to come in on a healing session straight away so you might just spend a bit of time doing some mindful meditation doing some breath work another yawn there yes, this yes. is quite incredible and um, so doing some beautiful breath work first of all and um, on the breath work, spending time with yourself, connecting with yourself and your own breath, grounding the energies, and um, then inviting. Oh, it can be such in. a beautiful healing experience for the both the, the pet guardian and for the pet because both of them are relaxing together. Yeah. And if an animal walks away from you or moves away, that's a sign that they're not ready. And you are allowed to let them go, yeah. and you must never force either healing or acupressure on your pet. And another thing I want to talk about is obviously as a vet, I'm always worried about what can go wrong. So I want to talk about four important things or situations when you must not give acupressure. Okay. Okay. The first thing being, do not give acupressure to a pregnant animal. Simply because there are some points which you can press and actually flip the fetus. That is how powerful acupressure can be. Right. Most of the time acupressure is forgiving, so it's safe, but there are certain conditions. One is pregnancy. The second thing is if your pet has cancer or has any abscesses or open wounds, absolutely acupressure is not uh, I was going to say, lumps or bumps, not to be putting any pressure in these yes. near edemas yes. um, or anything like that. Yes, I would avoid. And then obviously, do not give acupressure straight after your pet has eaten. Give at least an hour before and after a meal and do not do it then there is strenuous exercise. So don't go taking your dog out for a big run and then bring him back and try and get him to sit down. It's unlikely to happen and it's not good. And I also think, Rahini, on that, mm -hmm. um, to when you are going to give uh, acupressure, is um, give your animals time to relax afterwards yes. so that they can process the healing. Like if we go for a massage or a spa treatment or whatever, we're not going to suddenly go and do a marathon. Yes, uh, correct. It's the exactly. same with animals as well. It yeah. gives them the opportunity for all the body systems to work together because yeah. what's beautiful about healing and acupressure work is that you're not just working with one part of the body. You're working with 
um, all of the body systems from respiratory to cardiovascular to urinary um, to the nervous system and so they're all working together in yes. harmony and the beauty of it is that um, what a lot of uh, Western practitioners find difficult to understand is the connections, the links. You might think I'm working on the head and think I'm focusing on a problem she has in the head. No. When you're putting pressure somewhere here, the governing vessel mm. goes all the way down. So you could be working on, you, you might have a problem on the foot, but working on over here completely somewhere. Yeah. And for example, the heart meridian doesn't actually, uh, you know, yeah. go around the heart. It goes around the front legs. Exactly. So there's a lot to learn, but at the same time, what we are trying to teach you is simple things which you can do happily at home, safely, and, and you know, enable you to support your pet through, um, you know, illness. And another yawn. There you go. Now, when we come to the end of an acupressure session or a healing session, which is really outlined in detail, uh, in, in the our book, book yeah. you can heal your pet. But when we come to the end of a healing session, we're not just going to abandon our pet. It's really important that we give thanks to our beautiful yeah. animal that we're working with. So we're going to give thanks to Lily. But we're also going to just gently stroke the body yes. to ground um. the energies. Um, not just Lily's, but ours. Yeah. And then we're just going to set the intention because intention is everything when we're giving healing, when yes. we're giving acupressure. And that intention now is to see Lily going forward safe, well, happy and healthy. Now, intention in the opening massage should be about expose your problem so I can help you intention at the end when you do the closing massage which is what i'm going to demonstrate now because it's very important to close the channels you can't leave the channels open so is to do the closing massage and at that time you want the channels closed but also for healing to continue after Absolutely. so you do the exactly the same procedure as the opening massage Start exactly where the bladder meridian is, and you can do one side at a time. This is so interesting, Rahini, because the bladder meridian is exactly the same on a horse um, or yes. a camel or yeah. you know some of the animals that we tend to work with in so our practice. You go, but remember, this goes a lot quicker. You have to literally go like that, go all the way down, and go. I'm doing this side. It's very quick. And there's a two or three techniques to it. Another one could be the cupping technique, and you can go all the way flat and then go there on the ground. Go like that, use that around the spine, you go very quickly. Now, right. obviously some animals don't like their feet being touched. If we've got rescue animals or uh, that have had emotional or physical abuse or anything like that, you can intentionally send that intention, but maybe just go to the end of the flank and just with your mind, breathe down that leg to the um, yes, foot you can. and finish and, um, off. Acupressure, obviously you have to touch the animal um, and you have to touch your pet and do the points. But with healing, the beauty is you can do it from far away with a distance. Yes. So if, you're, if your pet is refusing acupressure, there's no need to panic. You can do a bit of healing and it will still help. Exactly. Much. Yeah. Exactly. So, um, I mean, I hope through this little session you've got uh, quite an idea of both about healing and about acupressure and how they blend beautifully and integrate with the conventional treatment that as a vet myself or any other vet might advise because for any painful conditions especially like arthritis or um, even you know digestive problems mm. epilepsy it, it, anything there is an acupressure point and acupressure can help and so can healing yes healing can be um, given um, to any animal with any condition um, whether you are hands-on whether you are working distantly and intention is everything. So thank you, Lily, for joining us today. And I think she thoroughly enjoyed yes, this, Dr. Rahimi. So with your fingers, your thumbs, and your intentions, you can hear your pet. <laughs>